Okay, so we're we're, we're going to get started, um, and I uh, just wanted to, to to warn everyone that we're going to start recording the session from now. All the proceedings of today's and tomorrow's um, presentation sessions will be shared. Uh, they're being recorded now and will be shared with the community for those who can't follow live. Okay, so welcome to the virtual Black Light Summit. Uh, this is the first virtual summit hosted by the Princeton University Library. Uh, this event was organized in conjunction with an event that just concluded the DevOps Summit. Um, and that was a very successful event thanks to the efforts of Francis Yu and Anna Headley. Uh, so in this virtual format, because of uh, because we had to adjust to the the circumstances uh, of COVID nineteen, we are now in this distributed virtual fashion. And one of the positives I'm seeing of that is that we're now able to get additional participation from people who aren't uh, who, who don't have to worry about the logistics of travel or who might have had the inability to to actually come physically to Princeton University. And so for this event, uh, just in the registrations before we started, we had 60 registrants representing 30 organizations. You can follow the agenda at this URL, tinyurl.com slash blacklight dash summit dash 2020. Today consists mostly of presentations, but tomorrow, um, there are a couple of opportunities for more of a, a conversation um, and, and dialogue um, with all the participants. Uh, there are breakout sessions and um, the, we're gonna have those divided into two topics. Uh, one is uh, the, on indexing and, in, indexing and integrations and another one is customizations and sustainable development. There are also two slots available for five minute lightning talks. And if you're interested in having that as an, op uh, as an opportunity to present, please add your name as on the two open slots that are available on the agenda. So the, the sessions will be uploaded to the Code for Lib YouTube after the event. So I wanted to go over the Code of Conduct uh, we're following the, we're under the guise of Code for Lib. And so Code for Lib seeks to provide a welcoming, professionally engaging, fun and safe conference experience and ongoing community for everyone. We do not tolerate har harassment in any form. Discriminatory language and imagery, including sexual is not appropriate for any event venue, including talks or community channels, such as the chat room or mailing list. So even though we're in a, a, a virtual environment, uh, none of this, uh, uh, we do not tolerate any of this uh, harassment. And so please be mindful of this in the, uh, in the Slack chat room. Um, more information about the code of conduct is available on the Code for Lib GitHub. And if you encounter uh, any unwelcome behavior, please reach out to the community support volunteers directly on Slack. Um, that's James Griffin, Anna Headley, who has hackmaster.a as her username in Slack, Francis Cayua, El Cromulente, or me, Nikitas Tampakis. Uh, and be mindful if, if you have something you'd like to report that try to reach out to someone who isn't currently facilitating a session because it, it will be hard for that person to give you your full attention. So, uh, during this event, we'll be doing our communication on the Code for Lib Slack on the Blacklight Summit channel. If you aren't there yet, you can join by signing up at codeforlib.org slash slack. And everyone, how about you say hi and introduce yourself on a mega thread on this channel. Says several people are typing, it's very exciting.
There's competing mega threads. <laughs> Nice. So um, in Zoom, the chat has been disabled. So you only can interact uh, with the session panelists via Q&A. The presenters will be promoted to panelists during their talk so they can answer any questions that may come in. And here is the schedule. Um, it's a two-day event. Um, all these times are in the Eastern time zone. We're currently in the open session. Uh, after that, there are going to be uh, two sessions of institutional demos. We have 16 submissions. And afterwards, uh, with the time that we have left in the day, we will go into a separate Zoom and do a social breakout and go into a small groups so we can have a little bit of that more direct personal interaction. Uh, on Friday, there will be some lightning talks and presentations and ask anything session. Um, and followed by the two breakout sessions. Uh, just to, to, to reiterate, the first one is on indexing and integrations. The second one is on customizations and sustainable development practices. So um, think a little bit about that. And um, on, when we get to those sessions, um, we can seed ideas and, and, and hopefully have a good conversation and interact that way. Uh, I would like to thank the conference program committee, uh, without whom uh, we wouldn't have been able to come together in the way that we have. Uh, they've helped in making sure that we can make the most of this event in the virtual format. So uh, this committee is with Justin Coyne, Andrew Gearhart, James Griffin, Charlie Morris, Jack Reed, Jane Sandberg, and myself. Um, I also would like to thank the team at Princeton uh, who worked on DevOps. That was uh, Francis Cayu and Anna Headley. And I also want to thank Kim Lehman, who was taking the lead on planning the event logistics when we thought we were still going to be meeting physically. So uh, what is Blacklight? You can find out a lot of information about the community about the code sort, the code base, and, and sort of showcase applications on the website for the project, projectblacklight.org. Um, Blacklight is an open source collaborative platform for building discovery solutions. Um, the latest release has support for Rails 6, Solar 8, and Pooch, oh, look, that's my email. Okay. Uh, so it has support for, for Rail 6, Solar 8, and uh, Bootstrap 4. Um, the, the, the main thing I wanted to uh, highlight with this is that um, development began um, over 10 years mm -hmm. ago um, with efforts led by the University of Virginia. And uh, back then, um, solar uh, was the main option uh, it, so solar works on top of a Java library called Lucene. They're often thought of in conjunction. Um, but Elasticsearch has come on since the initial development, and there, um, there have been some efforts of potentially having Blacklight support that. Um, also, um, we're keeping up to date with Rails major releases and Bootstrap major releases, which sort of drive the major versions of Blacklight. Um, a lot of people think of Blacklight sort of in two camps, uh, as, it, as the main application, as a catalog or discovery application, often in use by many libraries as their main catalog, um, or as a component in a digital repository application, the search box for your repository app. A popular perception is that Blacklight just works, and um, it ha the project has less governance than other open source communities, yet at the same time, it's a top sponsor frequently at the Code for Lib conference. And uh, development is driven by community code sprints on related applications. So, so recently, a lot of new features were bundled into the app um, because of a community-wide Arclight sprint, which was able to allow uh, the addition of a newer solar feature, which can do child documents, for instance. Um, so 
Without uh, further ado, I'd like to introduce Jack Reed, who will talk a little bit more about sort of the black white gem ecosystem. Thanks, Nikitas. Um, I'm not sure how to present this and share it, so I'm just going to share it like this, I think. And um, there's not much text here, but um, you know, like Nikki just alluded to, there's a lot of um, you know different code sprints, different uh, gems um, uh, related to blacklight, and I'm going to talk about that and um, some of the associated communities. Um, so Blacklight itself is a Ruby on Rails engine. And it's kind of like a plugin um, to Ruby on Rails. But Blacklight also allows uh, you to kind of build plugins. And Blacklight plugins are also often Ruby on Rails engines. And they can provide uh, useful and common uh, functionality for Blacklight applications. So, an example of this, so just a few examples, um, are advanced search. So providing advanced search functionality in Blacklight. A date range limit uh, gives you kind of a, a way and a facet to select a range of dates. Blacklight gallery provides uh, search results in like a gallery view. Blacklight maps, map view for Blacklight content, and Blacklight hierarchy. Um, hierarchical facets, Blacklight. So I'm not gonna mention all of them here, but uh, they're listed actually on the Blacklight Wiki um, under Blacklight add-ons. And I've updated this page um, uh, today uh, to add some ones that I know about. And so this may not be complete though. So if there's additional ones that you know about or you think something should be changed here, um, feel free to make that change or um, um, talk about it in the Slack channel and I'm sure uh, somebody can help make the right change. So not only are there plugins available for Blacklight, uh, there's kind of just, there's even some offshoot communities um, that kind of are Blacklight adjacent, um, but um, kind of operate as a community uh, slightly independent from Blacklight. So some of the examples here are uh, Spotlight, uh, which is kind of like a curated digital collections um, plugin for Blacklight. Geo Blacklight, which um, allows um, an application to provide discovery for geospatial data and maps. And Arclight. So this is a community working in a software project working on um, discovery for archival material in EADs. So these are three different communities worth kind of a mentioning of, um, you know, offshoots of Blacklight that use Blacklight plugins kind of as their main software base and also help contribute um, additional uh, functionality uh, to the core of Blacklight. So that's all I have. And uh, maybe I'll turn it over to Justin Coyne. All right, thank you, Jack. So I have a few minutes today um, to talk about some of the things that are happening new in Blacklight over the past six months or a year or so. Um, to start off, my name is Justin Coyne and I work at Stanford University Libraries. Um, I've been working on Blacklight for about 10 years and I work pretty closely with uh, Chris, Beer, and, and Jack on a lot of Blacklight stuff, um, even though we're in slightly different departments um, or slightly different uh, I guess, groups. Um, so right now we have time to cover two things kind of briefly. Uh, and the first is view component. View component is a new newer library from GitHub. Uh, it was first 
shown to me at uh, RailsConf last year in Minneapolis. And I talked with the person presenting about it and, and the presentation just kind of blew me away and said, wow, this is really what we're looking for with, uh, with all my Rails projects, really anything that's a very complicated Rails project that's more than, you know, like the blog post. Uh, so what is view components? This is how they describe it on the README. View components are Ruby objects that output HTML. So think of it as an evolution of the presenter pattern inspired by React. Um, so why are we looking to change what Rails offers for free in, in the views? Like, why are we adding to it? And if you want, there's a, uh, there was the Rails Comp Couch Edition that just uh, posted all their videos this week. And one of the videos was about uh, view components. And, and they really lay this out in, in detail, but I'm going to try to paraphrase some of the things that were said. Uh, now, the problem with the, the Rails view layer is that it's all in ERBs. Uh, and what Rails does for us is it takes these ERBs and it does a com compile step. And it compiles each ERB template to a method. And it puts all these methods, one for each partial, into a context. Um, so we basically have this view context object that has hundreds or thousands of methods. On top of that, it is mixing in all of these helpers. So basically, we end up with, in runtime, a huge class and it becomes very difficult to reason about the data flow. And it becomes, and that's exacerbated because there's not a strict interface on these, on these methods. Uh, you can pass any partials to methods. And we're not really sure, like, if you, what if you pass one, one, uh, if you pass one local variable, will it work? Uh, if you pass a combination of local variables, if you spell them wrong, will it work or will it break? Um, there's not a great way of, of testing this. And so view components sort of uses all the benefits that object-oriented programming has to offer and applies that to the view layer. It's going to put uh, an interface on every component, just the same at, that Vue.js or Angular or, uh, or React would. Um, so it, it helps developers who are coming from these JavaScript communities get on board um, and it helps us prevent this sort of junk drawer of view context and helpers that we currently have. So what does this look like in, in terms of real code? So a component, uh, in this case, we made a blacklight modal component, um, is a simple Ruby class that extends from the view component base class. Uh, in this case, on line three, we use this optional feature says with content areas. Now, by default, you can have you'd have like one content area, but it also offers multiple content areas. So this component here is going to be a, a bootstrap modal where there's a header row, there's a body text, and then there's a footer row. Um, so this goes in app components and then Along with that in app components is a similarly named ERB template file. And this is just regular ERB. And you can see that on line four, I have this header slot. Line eight, I have that body slot. And line 12, I have a footer slot. Um, and then when we render this, it will look like a bootstrap modal because it has all the bootstrap styles we want. Uh, so the last question is, uh, how do we instantiate something like that? How do we use it. And so here's just a regular uh, template, like my, my show template. Um, this is from our institutional repository. Uh, all we have to do is say render and then pass it an instance of that component. Uh, now, because my component takes three slots, um, we pass that as a block. So I say for the header, I'm passing in a string called set content type. And in the body, I'm passing you know, a chunk of ERB. Um, You'll notice I'm not passing the footer here. That's totally optional. So uh, anytime you could use a partial, you could consider making a view component. Um, 
and anytime you're going to like reuse this functionality or have something complex with conditionals that you want to test, I would highly recommend it. Uh, the second thing we've been working on over the past year is to put, uh, to add Docker for the development and testing setup. So if you're not familiar with Docker, you'd want to go to this website, uh, docker.com slash install, and that will help you get set up for whatever operating system you're running on. Um, I also want to say a big thank you to Julian Faher. Uh, he publishes this site, learndocker.online, which is an invaluable resource. Um, he also gave a workshop at RailsConf last year, which was excellent, which I've used that content heavily for uh, doing a Samvera Connect uh, workshop. And here's my version of Julian's workshop. If you're interested in, in how you want to Dockerize Rails, go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, it breaks everything down into several steps. So we add one thing at a time and, and, and keep building up our knowledge. So what is Docker? I've gotten a little bit ahead of myself. Um, this is from the Docker website. They say Docker is a tool designed to make it easier to create, deploy, and run applications by using containers. Containers allow a developer to package up an application with all of the parts it needs, such as libraries and other dependencies, and ship it out all as one package. Um, typically, uh, you could think of Docker as something like a VM, but much lighter. It doesn't run the whole operating system. It's just a, usually a single process. Um, so we might have a container that runs solar and we might have a container that runs our rails. Um, but we don't want to try to put these all in the same container. There's, there's three big concepts for understanding Docker. There's an image, uh, a container, and a volume. So a Docker image is a file made of multiple layers used to execute code in a Docker container. So the image is the sort of like the portable component. It's just the, 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 byte, uh, the bits on disk. Um, images become containers at runtime when they run on a Docker engine. So you can take one image and if you instantiate it multiple times, you have multiple containers. They're like the runtime instance of an image. So containers are sort of a standard they're lightweight because they're not running that whole operating system. They're isolated from one another. Uh, so you don't need to, you, you basically have a very good description of what is running in one place. Um, and there's no interaction between multiple com components because those should be in separate containers. And volumes are the preferred mechanism for persisting data generated by and used by Docker containers. Uh, our volumes can use storage drivers. And so I'm just going to talk, uh, why would we want to use Docker specifically for Blacklight? And what do we need to know for Blacklight? And so the first thing we need to know is Docker is just a convenience for us. You don't have to use it. We're just using it for development and testing. And primarily what we're using it for is to spin up a copy of Solar and configure Solar so we can go ahead and test. Uh, prior to using Docker, we had a script called, um, well, first, first we had a, just a Git repo that was a, uh, a Tomcat installation that we had installed Solar into, and we called that Jetty Wrapper. I guess it wasn't Tomcat, it was Jetty. Uh, and we would just pull this down. Well, it wasn't the best way and that repo was getting very big. Um, so the next thing we tried is a script uh, called Solar Wrapper, which would go out to the Apache website, try to fetch a version of Solar, pull it down. The problem there is it never managed like which copy of Java or which version of Java you're using. So it wasn't really a complete solution and it had to deal with all the changes on the Apache website that were going on. So number two thing you want to know is how do I invoke it? 
And we have a file in the Blacklight repo called docker-compose.yaml, and that's the instructions. And right now it has two subsections in it. One is for web and one is for solar. So if you want to start all the containers described in Docker Compose, you do Docker Compose up. Or if you just want to start solar, which is often what I'm doing, is I just do Docker Compose up solar because solar is the name of the container in the Docker Compose file. And then at the end, when we're done, we want to learn how to clean up. So there's Docker Compose down and dash V. That dash V is going to uh, remove all the volumes and the Docker Compose down removes all the containers. And that helps you from, you know, having this, this persistent solar. If you want it to be persistent, don't use that dash V. And that's all I have. I'm a bit out of time, but I'll just mention that Chris Beer is going to talk tomorrow more in depth about how we're using view components. Uh, I believe David is up next. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm David Kinzer from Temple University, and I will be talking about how you can contribute um, to, uh, to Blacklight. Let me just share something. All right. Okay, so let's see. So contributing to Blacklight. Um, so I think uh, so. I'll kind of order these uh, in in terms of like uh, communication contributions, and then other sort of more intensive contributions later. So in terms of communications. Uh, I think that one of the best places to contribute is by joining uh, conversations happening in, uh, in this on the slack channel on code for lib uh, for blacklight and also for traject which is uh, not you know it's it's a it's an etl gem uh, used uh, for a lot of blacklight projects so i think a lot of people who use blacklight use traject so i'm just uh, pointing out that 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 is a one of the um, channels that's pretty useful to join uh, at least for me uh, another place where you can continue the conversation uh, is by joining the Blacklight uh, development uh, Google group. Um, there's uh, questions that get asked there uh, pretty often and a lot of uh, um, um, sort of events get, get announced there, uh, including, including this one. So you might have actually heard uh, about this um, um, event from uh, the Google group. So that's something that's out there and uh, um, it's uh, it, you, yeah, anyone, I think pretty much anyone can join this. Um, then of course, uh, there's some more sort of uh, hands-on sort of things. Uh, being, you know, creating issues um, in any of the Blacklight and, and the Blacklight uh, GitHub repository and the other sort of Blacklight related uh, um, gems and, and applications, uh, creating issues, documenting issues, um, that, that kind of thing is, a, is always a, a good way of uh, contributing. Uh, you can, of course, create, uh, you know, take it a step further and create a pull requests for these issues, uh, or you could submit uh, uh, tests or tests people's PRs, you know, just say, hey, look, I tried this and it worked for me. That's always a really, really good way to contribute. Um, let's see. And uh, I think uh, one another way is uh, there's a wiki uh, associated with a lot of documentation, keeping it up to date, writing new wikis. I think that's really important. Um, probably I should have put that up even higher up because the documentation is so important. And, um, and I think there's an IRC channel somewhere. I haven't actually ever used it, but I know it gets mentioned, so I'm, po I'm posting it um, uh, here. And I, um, I think that's it for me. Uh, let's see who goes next. Does anybody know who goes next? 
So it looks like we're 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 running uh, ahead of schedule. So I think what we'll do uh, is um, so the the, the the we'll we'll let it, we'll give ourselves some of this time, but um, at at three o'clock we'll we'll reconvene and um, actually and let me let me bring up the uh, uh, version of the the rest of the stuff for today. I'll share my screen. Okay, uh, share that. Okay, so do you all see that? Yeah, so uh, at three o'clock, uh, we'll start with the institutional demos. Um, this is one of the feature components of the, of, of the event where we get a chance to see what people who have implemented Blacklight applications, what they're up to. And um, it's a, a big component of the event. And we had allocated up to potentially two hours for this whole session. Uh, we have 16 pre-submitted videos. But I think if we end that early, we'll have extra time at the end of the day and maybe do two social breakouts. And that will be that part. Uh, if, if you're interested in, in sort of brainstorming uh, while we wait until the, the top of the hour to start with the institutional demos, um, think about ideas you maybe want to discuss either in, in this back channel on, on the Blacklight Summit Slack or as ideas to bring up for the breakout sessions tomorrow. Um, as a reminder, one of them is about indexing integrations, and another one is about customizations and sustainable development practices around this community. And um, I wanted to also bring attention to one other thing that I noticed ap uh, appeared in the Blacklight Summit uh, channel, um, which is the th thanks to, to Mike Jarlow for, for sharing the link to the Rails Conf website. That, conference was supposed to happen around this week as well. And we had this wonderful resource of there being recorded sessions for what was accepted in that conference. So if you're looking to level up your Rails skills, uh, check out those videos. But for now, we will uh, we will take a break. We'll be back at the top of the hour, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we have, I, I see that we, uh, we we had 61 attendees, so um, that's incredible. And uh, we're across all all time zones. If you're interested in in sort of sharing where you're um, where you're zooming in from in the Blacklight Sum, I think that'll be great just to show how um, we have we had registrants uh, not just across the United States, but even uh, one or two internationally.